So they've gone from this is deadly, don't use it, until now, just don't even have any procedures. It's wonderful for you. Use it at local shooting ranges. You know, use it in concrete. Use it in machinery parts. It's everywhere. Now, we've got just 10 minutes here and then five minutes of the next segment. I want to give him the floor. Briefly, what is DU, doctor? And, and why are they proliferating its use? But then I want to shift gears the real reason you're here. We're trying to save lives exposing this. The Japanese news is reporting, and we had a PrisonPlanet.com article on it two days ago. Fear of radiation treated as psychiatric disorder in Fukushima. Despite proven track record of official deception, the kids are dropping dead. People are bleeding. They're dying. They admit it's many times worse than Chernobyl. But... They're not giving them treatment and saying, go on Prozac. So I guess they're taking what they do to our military heroes and now doing it in Japan. This is beyond madness. Dr. Rocky, what do you think of all this? It's total madness. Uh, a week ago, last Wednesday, I went to the Department of Veteran Affairs at Danville for my own medical care with the PTSD. Doctors said, knowing full well, exposed to depleted RAM, neurotoxic effects, confirmed hot and all this stuff, and exactly what he wanted to issue was Prozac. And I said, you can't, have you ever looked at my records? You can't issue Prozac when you guys are treating me for massive, massive spinal injuries and fibromyalgia with pain meds. It's crazy. Uh, the Department of Veteran Affairs came out with a brand new report on Gulf War illness. This is so new that I don't think the ink is dry. And in the segment here on depleted uranium, and I have to read this to you quote for quote because it's incredible. Quote, the purpose of depleted uranium surveillance program is to determine DE-related health effects and exposed soldiers and studied the medical and surgical management fragments. 3,192 urine samples have been screened for DU with four veterans found to be positive screened. The 79 veterans with documented DU exposure have been followed every two years since 1993. Veterans travel to Baltimore VA Med Medical Center have a complete medical examination with extensive laboratory studies to include urine, semen, blood, ur uh, uranium, chromosomal analysis, and neurocognitive testing. I can't even begin to describe, I mean, this is a brand new report that still follows the Los Alamos Memorandum that I was given in March of 1991 when I was ordered to clean up the mess by General Schwarzkopf, but at the same time ordered to lie in all of our reports. Here they're saying 79 veterans have been followed every two years since 1993. I had 424 individuals on my team I was responsible for, including 124 friendly fire. As of 2000, in the GAO reports, they'd only even followed up on 51. To this day, I cannot, I repeat, I have been unable to get medical care for my primary team members and friendly fire guys that we know were exposed, whose medical care I ordered in March and April of 1991. And then they come down and say there's only four people. I got, I got over a dozen positive reports on my desk right now to include mine, include Denise Nichols, our nurse, and everybody else. And uh, I got one back the other day from another guy, current time. They had just did the test here locally again. And Melissa McDermott came back and said, yeah, you're hot for DU, but it came out of your diet from your food and water in the area. When I talked to the, the assistant to the director at Danville VA Medical Center, they totally acknowledged, yeah, Doug, we all know there's no depleted uranium in any food or water around here. There's none at Chinook Air Force Base. But this is what they do to get out from it. It all comes down to it. Depleted uranium is the way the Department of Energy gets rid of the majority of its byproducts, waste byproducts. For every 100 pounds that goes into the enrichment process for the Department of Energy, over 99 pounds is pure waste. And all of that has to go someplace. So they came up with the idea, let's make uranium additions, which are not coated. They're solid radioactive materials consisting of radioactive isotopes 238, 235, 234, uranium 236, plutonium, neptunium, and americium. And as a consequence, when we look at the health effects, it's staggering. Because they say there are no health effects, but then, and you've got the documents, you put them up on your website. When you go to the internal VA reports, they totally confirm them. When you go to our medical records, they totally confirm them. When you go to the Department of Defense's Pentagon briefing on depleted uranium by Colonel J. Edgar Wakayama, they totally confirm it all. But that's my question to you, because I've, I've heard you on my show and I've seen documentaries where you broke down in the past. There were documents, as you know, in the late 40s, early 50s, where they looked at using DU and said, don't, because it's it, it, it has too much blowback on the troops. It's a soft kill. 
And then what changed then in the early 90s to go ahead and say, let's just use it? There was a lie about the combat capability of the Iraqi military and how effective their armor was. And so this is where it all ties together because... Oh, they said they had Russian reactive, right? They had Russian reactive armor that was immune to anything that we had, so they had to use DU. Okay, now, see, this is the screwy part. Not only did General Schwarzkopf assign me by name, which he was ordered to do by the Pentagon, God had to have a hand at this somehow, <laughs> and the Pentagon's mattered blue blazes at me, that uh, to clean up the DU mess. But when we went to clean that up, the next project they assigned me to was to capture equipment. So I did the assessment on the Iraqi Soviet armor and all of this stuff, and what I found out is we could have taken it out with a, a standard M60 machine gun, you know, or <laughs> basically anything we had, you know, standard rifle, because it was just basically nothing there. So they had that, and then we keep coming on down. So then we, you know, used it in Somalia. We used it in uh, the Balkans in 94 and 95. We used it in the Balkans in 99. Then, lo and behold, we set up all these current wars, Iraq and Afghanistan. We know in Afghanistan, Afghanistan, the Taliban, who we were ordered to overthrow because they wouldn't go along with the Unicall pipeline deal, that's why we went in there, did not have armor of any type. And yet we used depleted uranium munitions, and I've got the shipping documents where we shipped incredible amounts to Afghanistan. And obviously the health effects on the Afghanis and all the other... Yeah, Iraqis. I forget the tonnage in all these wars. It's some astronomical... Oh, it was 300, probably 370 tons during Desert Storm. We know around 30 to 40 tons in 94, 95 in the Balkans. I don't know how much in Somalia in 93 because... And by the way, the proof's in the pudding, as you know, Doctor. I, I've got London Guardian headlines, Lancet, 14 times increase in cancers and birth defects in Iraqi cities in the last few years that were bombed uh, with these munitions. And you see the same numbers in our troops. It is, it, it, is an, uh, it is a nightmare level. Now, shifting out of that, they tell you take Prozac, you're mentally ill if you've got DU poisoning, as you've talked about. Now they're telling the Fukushima people, no medical treatment, here's Prozac. Now the same thing, let's understand, with Fukushima and all of the contamination over there, that's a nuclear reactor went sour and everything else. But the standard guidelines for cleaning up that radiological mess outside, inside the reactor core, this is the Army regulation that I wrote, 700-48. The guidelines for maximum exposure to anybody should be exposed after that event for anything is in a uh, technical bulletin 9 278 that Rich Flazar originally wrote back in, you know, the, in, before Desert Storm, and then we redid after our DU test in Nevada. So it's all there. What we have now is an incredible amount of radioactive materials spread all over from combat, destroying all of these other equipment that have full radioactive elements and comp, comp parts in them. Then we have all these reactors that have gone nuts, and that, all of that waste has gone up in the atmosphere around. Even here at the University of Illinois in the local paper, the university was bragging how the scientists measured the radioactive particulates from Japan coming down on Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, the University of Illinois, and saying, we can measure it, we can measure it. And I'm going, then you've got a problem. And now you've got all of this waste coming across the ocean. I think Hawaii is the first state, first country, you know, first. Oh, there's just all those houses and everything with plutonium on it that that'll never, you know, lose its radioactivity. It's hitting the California coast, and they're like, "Hey, don't worry about it." Yeah, and then you know we brought all the contamination from uh, Camp, uh, Camp Doha back to Idaho. You know, kiss off the potato Idaho crop because we got all the deep contamination that we were ordered to clean up. Then we were that I helped write the plan for it, that the Kuwaiti said, take it out of our country, take it out of our country. So they put it in Boise, Idaho. Congratulations, Idaho. Stay there. I want to find out about this rebranding of radiation is good for you. Hello, I'm Alex Jones. Myself, my family. Doug Rocky's our guest. We just got him for five more minutes. Doc, the, the main reason I got you on is because this is hiding in plain view, as you know. It's an ongoing holocaust of our military and others. It's proliferating into every facet of life. The FDA and EPA are raising the levels of what they say is safe radiation, in some cases 100,000 times with one isotope. It's a new attitude. I mean, we all saw um, you know, pundits come out and say, radiation's good for you and culture. People ought to be thankful at Fukushima. And now they're throwing them in mental wards when they come in with blood coming out of their you know gums and stuff. Why is the why is the elite? What has changed in the global power structure to where in '86 they admitted Chernobyl was bad? 
This is bigger than that. They say it's no big deal. They wouldn't let you use DU until 1990. Now they're proliferating it everywhere. I mean, what is the mindset of these people? Why is this happening? Well, power control and money and everything else are just absolute complete arrogance. I mean, it's, it's like the same thing what happened in the 60s, the Better Living Through Chemistry, the American Chemical Society. And now we got incredible things. And, I mean, there's the discussions on all the radio t TV and everything this last week is how all these children are coming up with all these incredible brain and neurological diseases and everything else. It's all the chemical exposures. We've gone to war. We've destroyed infrastructure. We lose all these chemical, biological, radiological materials in our everyday life. We use them in warfare. We blow it up. We contaminate everything. Well, the only way they can avoid liability is say, hey, it's all good for you, and you've got to believe us because we're your daddy, and we know what's best for you. In the meantime, people are sick and dying. Uh, you know, I... You guys, you've been incredible, Alex. I've got another one, too. There's a new documentary out, and again, this is from your one of your guys, you know, on the other side. Gary Knoll has put out a new, brand-new documentary called American Veterans Discarded and Forgotten. Incredible. This is brand-new, updated, and everything going on. I need to get him on about that. Oh, it's really, really good. I just reviewed it and helped put out the letter for sending it out this week. But we're seeing the same thing over and over again. We did a documentary that just came out a few months ago from France, from the French. They looked at Fallujah. They compared the health effects of the Iraqis and compared the health effects with all of our soldiers' kids at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. They're all got the same thing. They're all dying from the same thing. The vets are all I can't tell down. you how many soldiers I know, special forces, you name it, who are 30 years old, 35, and whose lives are just shot. I mean, they... I mean, you don't like to talk about yourself, but, I mean, you've... Uh, how many surgeries is it? Over 30, right? <laughs> I gave up counting. I mean, I gave up counting on the kidney surgeries while I was director of the DU project, and they're going, Doug, how do you do this research? How do you put it all together? You ought to be dead and so sick. You're, I mean, you're in and out of the hospital. You're either in the field blowing stuff up and cleaning it up or trying to figure out how to clean it up, or you're getting the hospital and surgery. It, it's nuts, but, you know, what's bad is I was ordered to get this taken care of. I briefed General Shinseki, you know, in written briefings. He issued the order mandating thorough medical care and training and viral remediation while he was commanding as a general. He signed the Army regulations as the commanding general for the chief of staff of the Army. Now he's secretary of the VA, and he acts as if there's no problem. I don't know about this. Well, how can you not be the secretary and not know there's a problem and not ensure medical care when, as the Army general, you were the guy that ordered it? The same thing with General Peake. Before him, the previous secretary, he had also ordered all the medical care based on my input. And he also became secretary of the VA. And yet, there's nobody sick. There's no problems. We got three quarters of a million of OIF, OEF, OND veterans already in VA medical care. Fifteen percent of the active duty force in the Army is non deployed because they're medically disaster. And you've got a one million backlog of military veterans seeking medical care from the VA at the time, and yet all you hear, it's broke, we can't do it, we don't know how to do it. <laughs> they know what to do, they have no intention of doing it, because how do you tell the American public, we went to war for no reason, and we've got millions of U.S. military casualties, and because of what we did, we have millions of non-combatant casualties, children that suffer because of our illegal actions. Well, it's, it's, it's like a gun that shoots 